Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I'm out here on the Tennessee River today and I'm going to be doing some anchor fishing for catfish. Now, out here this morning, I've got a little bit of current flow, but not a lot. So what I'm hoping to do is I've positioned myself here along this main channel ledge and I'm going to kind of space my baits out. I'm going to have one up shallow, kind of one over here in front of me right along this ledge as it falls, and then another one over here to the left, which hopefully the current will kind of push right along that deepest break line there. And so what I'm hoping to do is use the current to my advantage to get my scent going downstream while at the same time take advantage of the fact that the current isn't very strong and it's going to allow me to position my baits at different depths along this ledge. Because, you know, normally if you've got decent flow, you cast your baits out, you may, you know, try to cast them up shallow and along a ledge, but as the current moves your lines and moves your baits, it's going to bring them together kind of right in front of wherever you've got yourself positioned there. So I'm hoping this morning, at least for a few hours until they kick up the flow, I'm going to be able to hit multiple depths out here while anchored. So I've got a couple of different baits today. We've got some skipjack, and then I've also got some gizzard shad that are left over there uh, from my last trip. So I'm going to throw the piece of gizzard shad on one rod up here kind of shallow and then we'll use a skipjack head and a body piece on my other two rods that are over here a little deeper. So it's about 7 a.m. out here right now and I'm probably going to fish till 11-ish this morning and hopefully during that time catch some fish. Let's get to it. There's our piece of gizzard shad. The, the shad that I have left are kind of small so I'm basically just going to be cutting them in half. We'll give that a toss over here up shallow that's going to be just you know a few feet deep and hopefully like i said the current flow out here this morning kind of light it's probably 0 0.2 0 0.3 miles an hour i mean it's enough to get your scent going downstream but not enough that it's going to just pick up my baits and carry them in front of me the one thing that will mess us up this morning if it happens is the wind. Now right now it's flat calm out here. Weather forecast isn't calling for any major winds, but because the flow is so light, if we were to get some winds either blowing upstream or cross, cross the current here and gets my kayak spinning, there won't be enough current to keep me positioned forward. So that could be kind of a nuisance that we may have to deal with, but hopefully not. And here's that bait there. That is a skipjack body section. We're going to cast it out kind of in front of me here. Right now, I'm more in position. I'm at 36 feet. Throw that out there. Like I said, this, this next one here is going to go out deeper. And I'm hoping it kind of just comes along the edge of the channel here. That's what we're hoping for. We're going to try to get close to it. And it'll be down somewhere around 50 feet where it settles. And we're going to have the headpiece out there in that deeper water. There it is there. I'll give it a toss. I'm just going to be using three rods today. That's what I got with me. Give that a toss. All right y'all, we're fishing. Look at that rod right there. There goes a piece of body section of that skipjack. Yeah, man, that did not take long. 10 minutes, maybe. I'm excited about that. I wasn't sure coming out here this morning what to expect. We're still, it's July 2nd when I'm filming this video, so still dealing with the spawn. We've got some current, but not a lot current having some current to get your scent going downstream never hurts anything i didn't know what to expect coming out so to get bit right away it's definitely encouraging get him up here we've about got him to the kayak he's just going to be a little one but we're getting a skunk out with him First one in the kayak. Let's get him going before he 
flops out on his own. All right, that was fun. Let me get another piece of skipjack. That one there threw the bait off the hook, so we'll bait up with another just body piece right there. Throw it out in the same spot. Well, there's just the next bait there. That skipjack I got is kind of small. So those body pieces are kind of small there, but they'll catch a fish. I'd rather, I'd rather have a small piece of skipjack than a bigger piece of just about anything else out here. Skipjack is a magical bait out here on this river. Here comes that piece of shad. Yeah, we hooked up in the shallow water here. The camera adjusted there, we might actually see it. <laughs> yeah, this bait here I had tossed up there just a few feet deep. Kind of on top of this ledge. I wanted to hit multiple depths out here this morning. I mean, these fish could be at any depth. I normally try to focus on the deepest break line. But you just never know, depending on how active the fish are. They could be up really shallow or, or really deep. You just never know. And a day like today gives me the perfect opportunity to hit multiple depths. And I'm going to take advantage. That's another, about the same size as the other one there. There's just another small one right there. Goodness, he's on. Well, he wanted to get out of here, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that one ate a piece of the gizzard shad, so we'll put another one on there. It's, again, all my shad are kind of small, so we're just going to cut them in half. But we'll get baited up, throw another one up there. Okay, there's just another piece of that gizzard shad. I had gotten some bigger shad in my net before that last trip, but I burned through all my bigger ones there on the, on the last one. So we just down to the scraps now. Which is fine. These smaller ones will catch fish too. I hate to be wasteful and just, you know, have caught them and killed them for no good reason, you know. We'll make use of them. Look at that front rod. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, it's exciting when those rod tips go over, ain't it? <laughs> it gets me pumped up. This one here has been a long time coming, y'all. I have started out the morning kind of hot getting two fish there right away. And I've sat here probably an hour now with nothing going on before this one hit. And this is on that uh, skipjack body piece. He just, oh, he's got another line over there, I think. Yep. He swam sideways. He's just kind of going where he wants to go. I'm going to let him do it too. He's going he's to take a little drag now. Bad. He's got in this other line here. I'm going to switch out them two rod holders. Set back down. Actually, you know what? Look at this. Make it lucky right here. I don't drop these rods overboard in the process. Yeah, man. We got it out of him. Got him out of the other line there. I get lucky once in a while, y'all. I kind of wonder if this ain't a striper. I could be wrong. Kind of acting like it a little bit. Didn't have that hard run initially. We'll see. We'll see when we get him up here. Well, he's a digging now. <laughs> it's a fun fish, regardless of whatever it turns out to be. I still ain't got to look at him. He's come up to the surface a couple times, but I wasn't able to see him. Yeah, it is a striper. I thought it might be. The way it was acting there just didn't didn't seem like a blue cat or a flathead. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. Always a welcome surprise, y'all. All right, y'all. Nice strap right there. 
these things are fun, man. <laughs> they are blasting. You know, when I'm anchored down like this with my lines cast out, that's typically when I get them. I don't get a whole lot of them when I'm suspend fishing while either drifting or anchored. But while my lines are cast out, bait's sitting on bottom. I get them pretty frequently. All right, well, let's let him go. I'm gonna just torpedo in there. There he goes. Sometimes we're into the warmer months now because it's July 2nd out here, our water temps. We've had some rain recently. Our water temps only 75 degrees right now, but sometimes these stripers in these summer months, they just don't do well. If you don't land them quick, get them back in the water quick, they'll go belly up on you. So during these summer months, I try to, I try to be better about it. I try to get them back in as quick as possible. So anyway, that was fun. Let's get us another bait on there. I cut another one of those skipjacks. There's just a body section. Again, we're just going to toss this right back in that same general area right there along this ledge. And that current's just pushing the bait downstream. And the current flow is going to continue to pick up as the morning goes on. Some mornings out here, you know, TVA controls the flow out here at our, at our hydroelectric dams. And typically in the summertime, in these warm months like this, you'll either not have any flow at all during the morning hours or you'll have a very small amount like we do out here today and they'll gradually increase as the day goes on and the energy demands increase. So uh, yeah, we got our baits back out there. See if we can get some more. Look at this rod right here getting hit. Reel down on him because I think he may have it. Yeah, he does. He's got it. I'm not sure if he did there for a second. These Academy rods, I'm still testing them out here this summer. It's kind of a summer project. These little roughneck rods I got on clearance for $6.75. They're uh, real stiff compared to my ugly stick rods. And sometimes when you're getting a light bite, it's hard to tell if they're hooked up or not. And like my ugly sticks, it's pretty obvious. This one here is going to be a, another one of them dinkity doodah blues. Well, it's a bite though. It's action. Well, there is probably the smallest one of the morning so far. But I'm still thankful to get him because it has been a been a slow morning out here. I've been sitting here thinking I should have done some drifting today. Um, you know, here lately though, when I've been drifting, of course I got that monster here a couple weeks back drifting, but mostly what I've been getting is just small, that size right there, that size fish is what I've been getting on my drift. So I was hoping today maybe do some anchor fishing, maybe improve my quality a little bit, but uh, so far not so much other than that striper, which was a fun time. But uh, it's just par for the course this time of year. We're still right here in the spawn, probably got another couple weeks here of it before it really wraps up and we get back to some better quality fish and I'm just out here putting in the time man that's what you gotta do just put in the time and try to be on the water right place right time when the big one comes along oh oh goodness I was about to cast that rod out look at rod oh man he's pulling too buddy go but that's the good one right there. That's the one we want. I can get that rod out of the rod holder, man. I was about to cast that other bait out. I was going to put me a piece of skipjack up there in the shallows. Look at that line swimming, man. He has made a long run. That is a hard pulling fish right there. Wondering if this ain't another one of them old striped fish. Won't hurt my feelings a bit if it is. He swam sideways and has thankfully not gotten in my other line. What I am going to do though, right quick, let's switch them two rod holders out. Two rods out. I'm, I'm excited, y'all. I can't get my words out. Switch that rod to a different rod holder if I can talk. This time of year, you know, I was just saying a bite is tough. It is hard to get on good quality fish 
right now. So when I get one like this, that's going to strip drag like that. It is extra exciting. These Academy rods here, this is another one that hit on this old $6 clearance rack rod. They're still holding up good. I mentioned before the guides on these things leave a lot to be desired. But the rod blank itself, uh, the reel seat, all that seems to be good. This fish is coming back now. He's, going, he's trying everything in the world to get him out of the line. <laughs> he's trying everything in the world he can run up there shallow if he wants to because I still got this rod sitting over here well see what he's going to go that way we're going to go around that rod again y'all I'm pretty sure it's a striper I think it may be a pretty good one too They never know with these things just because they pull so dang hard. You don't know if it's a 10 pounder or a 30, 40 pounder. I'm making progress on him here. Yeah, that's a striper. I thought it was the way he was pulling. <laughs> Man, they're a fun time. Let me get him over here and we're going to land him on this side of the kayak over here. Oh. All right, y'all, look at that. We got us another one. <laughs> I got that dang sun behind me, too. Oh, there's going to be a shadow on him for the picture. Dang. That's still a fun time, man. These things just pull so hard. <laughs> All right, I don't want to waste any more time with him. Let's get him back in so we can send him home in good condition. Just going to torpedo him. There he goes. All right, let's get these baits back out here now. All right, guys, it's about 11 a.m. I'm getting ready to go home and get some lunch and maybe get a little air conditioning too because it's getting hot out here. But this morning's trip, the bite was kind of limited, at least compared to my most recent catfishing trips. But Still got on a few fish today, including a couple stripers, which are always a fun time. I am thankful for every one of those fish that I accidentally luck into while catfishing. But uh, anyway, guys, I had a good morning out here. It was a fun trip. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.